What's up everyone? Welcome to the very first episode of Stay and Play, the weekly roundup, where we will talk about what's been happening in the world of PlayStation in the past um, week. So yeah, let's get it. Um, this is the very first episode for the channel and I do hope that you like it. And if you do, please like, subscribe and ring the notification bell and also um, leave any comments that you thought you might have in the comment section and I will get to you um, as soon as I can. But other than that, let's go. So the first topic we're going to jump into is an article released by Bloomberg on the 14th of February by Takashi Mochizuki about the PlayStation 5 costing $450 to produce. Not much details were revealed in terms of how this production cost came to be, as in, is this the cost of the components or does this cost include labor or, and packaging? So the article goes on in saying that the high production cost is making it difficult for Sony to come to a release price for the console, especially when it comes to what the cost of Microsoft's Xbox Series X might be. Now, the reason for this production cost is because of scarce components, specifically when it comes to DRAM and NAND flash memory. These are components that are also required for smartphones, and with the plethora of smartphones that come out every year, it's understandable why these components would be in high demand. Now with that being said, even though the Bloomberg report specifically talks about it in regards or relation to Sony, I'm pretty sure Microsoft is going through the same thing as well, as these components are also required in their next generation console. Is $450 an issue for consumers when it comes to purchasing a next generation console? Well, if we look at it historically, no console ever released did well above the $400 price point. If you look back at the PlayStation 3, that was a very horrible introduction. Once consumers saw that price tag, it made it very difficult to make the purchase. And that's why Xbox 360 took the lead for the previous generation. But in the long run, when components became cheaper to produce and manufacturing costs dropped, Sony basically caught up with the PS3 and surpassed Xbox 360 in total lifetime sales. But remember that the $400 price point is the sweet spot for Sony, especially with the release of the PS4. Now, is Sony willing to take a $50 loss on every unit of PS5 sold to achieve the $400 sweet spot? I don't know. What I do know is that according to iSupply, when PS3 first launched, Sony was losing up to $306 on every console sold. Let's take a moment to think about that. $306. That's more than three quarters of the retail price of a PS4 Pro today. And to date, Sony has lost $5 billion on the PS3. So it's safe to assume that Sony has a great history on taking a loss and are probably willing to take a loss on the PS5, but not to the extent of the PS3. And things are different today. Sony has a very fruitful network infrastructure with more than 30 million active users on their PlayStation network, which is a great source of revenue, something that they did not have back then in the PS3 era. Just for information's sake, Sony made $12.48 billion from the PlayStation Network in 2019. This is according to their latest sales report. So if Sony decides to take a $50 loss on the PS5, it is because they know they will recoup through the PlayStation Network. And it's only for the time being anyway. As components become cheaper to produce, the cost of each PS5 will become cheaper. Now on to a much somber topic. Sony will not be attending PAX East and GDC this year due to fears of the coronavirus. Sony says that the safety and well-being of their employees was the deciding factor in this decision. Sony has stated earlier in the year that they would make their PlayStation presence felt through gaming conventions happening throughout the year as they would not be attending E3. But with the coronavirus outbreak, a range of sorts has been thrown in their plans. This virus has infected more than 78,000 people throughout the world and has taken the lives of more than 2,000 people. My condolences to all the people and families affected by this virus and I hope and pray that things turn around for the better. Now a new patent has shown up online about what potentially could be a new PlayStation VR controller. It looks pretty interesting, especially if you consider that the Move controllers are the main controllers for the PlayStation VR. Those things are old. So this new patent seems to suggest that the new control will be able to track each individual finger on your hand, which will definitely be an upgrade in the precision and accuracy department. But more than that, 
it also infers that Sony will release a new PlayStation VR system. Now, I personally would be happy if these controllers also ended up being backwards compatible with the current PlayStation VR system, just like the DualShock 5 is with the PS4. Now, Sony has been leading the market in VR sales with more than 5 million units sold, and it looks like Sony will be doubling down on VR, which is fantastic. Now, the last story of the day is about the Uncharted movie. And production starts in four weeks, ladies and gentlemen. It's kind of amazing to hear, seeing that this movie has been in production since 2010 and has seen three directors come and go. Damn, Sony has some serious commitment issues. All jokes aside though, it seems as though the gears are moving again and that the project might finally hit the silver screen. And with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg playing Nathan Drake and Sully respectively, I have a good feeling Sony might actually give a F about this movie. IGN recently had an interview with Tom Holland and he was quoted as saying We start shooting in like 4 weeks. Mark Wahlberg is going to be amazing as Sully. The stunt departments that we have out there in Berlin have done an amazing job already prepping the stunts and it's going to be an exciting one. Holland was also quoted for saying If I'm honest, one of my favorite video games ever is the fourth Uncharted game. Unbelievable. And lots of the inspiration from, from the film has come from the game in particular. So there you have it everyone, the Uncharted movie will begin shooting soon and it might actually be another great movie adaptation of a video game, seeing how well Pokemon did and Sonic is doing. And that's it from me Francis, hope you enjoyed the very first episode of Weekly Roundup and also the very first episode of the Stay and Play channel. If you did, please like this video, subscribe to my channel and to stay up to date with the latest videos I drop, please click on the notification bell. Have a great one and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.